CBS Sports presents Candlepin Stars and Stripes. Featuring the best Candlepin bowlers from all over New England. And now in our 15th season, your hosts for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Dick Lutz and Mike Moore. Hi again, everyone, and welcome into another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV from Lita Lanes in Nashville, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Moore, and we've climbed the ladder all the way to the top of our mixed double series, a championship match this afternoon. Number two seed taking on number one seed. Last week we had a very close match, but perhaps one of the all-time lowest scoring matches we've had on Candleton Stars and Strikes. Very close was a very generous way to put it. However, I should announce to our audience that we have had all four bowlers sign contracts today. They promised to bowl at least 100 every string. Right, guys? This afternoon, they'll give yes. it their best shot. One 100 string bowled last week. Let's meet our championship teams vying for the top prize here this afternoon. Last week's winner, our number two seeded team of Dave Crumey of Peterborough and Nancy Vestal of Lynn. Dave Crumey out of Peterborough, average 121, high single 184. His high triple is 478. He bowls at uh, Bowling Acres in Peterborough and French King Lanes in Irving, Massachusetts. And our second uh, partner in that uh, team is Nancy Vestal of Lynn. 116 average, 179 high single. Her high triple, 454. And she bowls at Exeter Lanes and Lucky Strike Lanes in Lynn. Dave and Nancy eliminated Paul St. Pierre and Deb Bradford last week by the score of 289 to 275. They'll be taking on our top-seeded team of Dave Hodge of Melrose and Deb Regan of Manchester. First time on TV for Dave Hodge, 19-year-old from Melrose, Massachusetts. 116 average, 181 high single, triple 448. And Dave's pretty busy on the lanes at Wakefield, Melrose, and the Woburn Bowladrome. His partner is Deb Regan, who you saw last year in the uh, uh, mixed doubles competition. Her average is 120. 191 is her high single. Triple is 439 and does her bowling at Exeter Lane. So interesting contrast and bowling experience should make for a great match this afternoon. And we're happy to have back with us as one of our sponsors on Candlepin Stars and Strikes Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan of Salem. We're going to get right to our championship match coming up next on Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. We're right back after this. We are ready for our championship match on our mixed doubles segment on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes program. Dave Hodge and Deb Regan, the top seed, taking on Dave Crummy and Nancy Vestal. And it'll be Nancy Vestal, first to bowl, ready to go on Channel 50's Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. a tough spare to begin the championship match where the winning team splits a thousand dollars and in the uh, added prize fund our runner-up instead of five will split six hundred dollars. Ray Simino adding the extra money to uh, the past four weeks ladder series. As we wrap up our final week of the annual mixed doubles tournament. Nancy Vesta looking at the four horsemen left side with the nine pin in back. She and partner Dave Crumey last week bowled 289, which you wouldn't guess would be good enough to win, but it was by uh, 14 pins. What are the chances of that happening? Not very much in your favor, but it happened last week. As neither team was really able to find the range. Now we look at Deb Regan. Deb's been on WNDS seven times in the past. Her first ball right in the pocket, and she starts out with a strike. What a way to begin for Deb Regan. Right on the head pin, a little on the Brooklyn side, and she starts out with a strike. Filling her promise on the contract for all 100-plus games this week with her partner. Right on the head pin again. Could have been. That 5 7 10 still there is a nasty split. to a 10-pin lead. So Dave 
Crumey steps to the line. Brother Adeb uh, Bradford, who was defeated by he and Nancy last week, along with Paul St. Pierre, her partner. And Dave throws it right through for a half Worcester. Almost picked it up, leaves the five pin. Oddly enough, we've seen very few half Worcesters in this mixed double series. That may have been the first one, second at, at best. And he'll put a nine on the board. <laughs> Only one mark so far, and it's by Deb Regan, who pitched a strike in her very first frame. Bounced that one down a little bit and left the four horsemen on the left side. Krumi uh, is a public works employee in Peterborough, where he lives. Not married. Got a nice note here from Elaine Race from Berwick, Maine, who's a regular watcher of Candleton Stars and Stripes north of the border in the state of Maine. Dave is a, a college student and has lots of his rather vocal college friends here with him today. That's the first ball he's ever thrown on television. Gets rid of the butterflies. He won't forget it soon, I'm sure. Almost picked up the spare. Starts out with a 10 box. Threw the ball rather confidently for his uh, very first time. Full-time student at Suffolk University, majoring in accounting. Works at the Melrose Bowl, and he's a shift advisor at CBS. In the pocket, will it go? You can hear his rooting section is here. Number of uh, friends from Plymouth State and some other local colleges. And that'll be a spare. Dave Hodge. <laughs> He's well, pumped. Plenty of body English. I don't know if it's nervous energy, if that's uh, how normally uh, psyched up he gets, but how excited. I mean, he told me he's just been so psyched ever since he qualified a couple of weeks ago to be on the show. He can't, couldn't wait to get here. His mom, Lillian, is also yes. in attendance here. Yes. Now, Nancy Vestal. It's the six and the nine and the ten. The six has moved over a couple of inches, and a piece of wood has wedged its way between the six and the nine. And it cost her. Yep. That'll be a ten box for Nancy. We're going to be down a couple of marks to the team of Hodge and Regan. Tries to break up the split. Got some help with the wood. Got a leaner against the seven pin. It's the one and the three on the right hand side. Gonna take it. Yep. Nice spare that time by Nancy Vestal. First mark of the first string for the team of Dave Crumey and Nancy Vestal. Watch it again. That wood certainly was a factor. It helped out. Now on the spare. Deb Regan threw it past the head pin, but could have got a good count of six. Tough shot, a lot of wood. The eight pin still stands. Nine box for Deb Regan. Didn't want to use the wood, tried to get the uh, pin directly, which is tough to do, especially with that angle and coming from the right to the left. Now she's up against a mark in the sixth frame. Put it right in the pocket. And look what she's left with. 
the uh, four, five, seven, and ten with uh, some wood right in the center of the alley. A pin pretty much on either side of the five pin, but maybe a little too far forward. It's the kind of shot where you throw it right down the middle and just keep your fingers crossed. Which is just what she's doing. And she almost got it. It's the only way to play it. That'll be a 10 box. We continue to get cards and letters from viewers throughout New England who watch Candlepin Stars and Strikes each and every week on WNDS TV and on their cable system throughout the region. We appreciate hearing from you. We enjoy hearing from you, and we encourage writing to Candlepin Stars and Strikes, WNDS 50 Television Place. Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. Nine box for Dave Krumey. Hit a speed bump there. And comes up with a, another half Worcester. Takes out the two and the eight. His team down by nine pins. Still chopping through the middle. Well, that was a tough eight frame for David Krumey. As a very animated Dave Hodge steps up on lane 34. Almost. This house will come down if he throws yeah. one. Yeah, it was the four horsemen, and then suddenly it was just the one pin. Threw it by it. Kind of reared up there at the line and uh, forced his follow through, follow through to go too far to the left. Try to salvage a 10 out of this frame to take an eight pin lead. For completed frame. Interesting note here from Mary Dooling of Lemonster, Massachusetts, Michael, who says that she finds bowlers show the most professionalism of any sport. One bowler loses, he congratulates the winner, and they always seem to get along very well with each other. Do you think it's because they're gentlemen and ladies or because the day of the multi-million dollar paycheck has not, nor will it ever come to Candlepin Bowling? I suspect a little bit of both. Look at this, watch out, there it goes. Watch out, there it goes. And a high five from his partner, Deb Regan. How about that? Watch this again. Watch closely. Take because notes. it takes a while. <laughs> it does. Seven it's pin. not over yet. And yeah. there it goes. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy Vestal follows with a strike. Are these the same bowlers we saw last week? Two of them are. Yeah. Nancy wasting no time, right back on the head pin. She wants a piece of that $875 triple strike pool that we make available to any team that puts together three strikes in a row. Yeah. Two marks in a row. She broke 100. Don't you think that, it, you know, good scoring is contagious? One team gets going, it kind of prompts the other team to get fired up. That was a $50 shot right there, and they fell one pin shy. 115 first string for Dave Krumey and Nancy Vestal. Now Deb Regan will finish out the first string for her team with Dave Hodge working on a spare. We pass the head pin. Pins continue to fall. Look at that. She gets a uh, four horsemen still Four stand. horsemen after knocking only two or three pins down. So it's a good fill on the eight frame spare that uh, Dave Hodge put up that, with that fabulous split that he converted. Would have been a shame to have uh, had fewer pins filled after that. Yeah. Look at that spare by Deb Regan. Both teams warming up to the occasion here. Watch it again as she hit the four horsemen. 
Played it perfectly. $50 box coming up right here. $50 in bonus money. For three marks in a row. On the head pin. Just a bit high. Flush. Leaving the four and the six with some wood against the four pin. Although I don't think it's frozen. No, it's out in front of it. Not going to make it. They are at 125. They have a 10-pin lead. Hodge and Regan over Krumi and Vestal. It will be a 10-pin lead going to the second string, 125 to 115. Dave Hodge and Deb Regan leading Dave Krumi and Nancy Vestal. We head to string number two of this championship match. Mixed doubles continue on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Dave Hodge is first to bowl in the second string. He and Deb Regan lead Nancy Vestal and Dave Krumi by 10 pins. He is fun to watch, isn't he? He sure looks like he can be exciting. Set his averages down this year, Dick. Uh, he's in college as a freshman. You've had kids, you know what a big adjustment it is for them, just in every aspect of their lives, including things like bowling. We'll suffer a little bit as you put a lot of your uh, time and effort, as you should, into your studies. And he's also, as you mentioned, bowling a number of jobs as well, besides being a full-time student at Suffolk in Boston. Another split. Hoping the nine pin would go down, but ran into a, a blocking piece of wood. Couldn't get all the way to the standing pin. Watch as he talks to the pins. He's talking to the pins right now. You can see his hands. I think it's right where he wants it to be. He was motioning it. Now he's watching again. Now it's not as good. <laughs> the pins weren't listening. And that's where they're going to stay. How will he do it? He's going to the right. Well, look no, at this. almost got it. Gave it a shot. Okay, we'll watch to see if that Deadwood sweeps over to where the nine would have been. Yep. Either way. Not to be. Two open frames for Dave Hodge starting out the second string. Dave Krumi, his first appearance in the second string. Unable to convert the spare. Another close match like last week, but the, the pins falling a little more freely than they did a week ago. And that'll be an eight box, or will it? Yes, it'll be an eight box. For Dave Krumi. I want to take a moment to remind you about the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge right next door to Lita Lane's in Nashua on Amherst Street. If you're shopping in the Nashua area, if you're bowling at Lita Lane's, head on over to the Kahala. As Dave Krumi, will he get the strike? That pin moved an inch or two and still stands. If you're watching this on a Sunday afternoon, head on over to the Kahala right afterwards as Dave Krumi picks up the spare. Because every Sunday they have a terrific dinner buffet and it is served from noon to 8 p.m. Also Thursday night from 5 to 8 p.m. and the luncheon buffet is every day Monday through Saturday from 11.45 to 2 p.m. The Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge with terrific specialty dishes, nice atmosphere, nice people. You will enjoy it. The next time you're in the area, stop by and say hi at the Kahala Chinese Restaurant and Lounge right next door to Lita Lane's, 350 Emperor Street in Nashua. Deb Regan missing the spare. Number nine rated WCBC bowler for the 1998-99 season. As determined by total pinfall in six tournaments. Ten box for Deb. 
She lists as her hobbies. She's an avid reader. All kinds of books. Not into television and uh, one of the people who's not involved in going online, being part of the internet. Which is a pretty trendy thing to do these days. Lots of wood on the deck. Well, it's rolled off, most of it's rolled off the deck now. Seven, nine, and ten. Gonna take a little luck here. Not gonna make it. And an eight box for Deb Regan. Nancy Vestal will step to the line and she'll fill the spare that was accomplished by Dave Hodge. On the head pin. And she'll put eight in the spare. Nice mixing action on that one. She had the, uh, the diamond and the ten pin and eventually all that stayed was the six and the ten. Got a good clean shot at those two pins. Makeable spare here, and she'll take it. She took it the hard way, but she took it. Another opportunity for bonus money for Nancy Vestal. Right through the middle, the spread eagle. She makes this. She deserves every penny of the $50 we'll give her for making it. That wood in the back can't hurt, I would think. Two of the three on the right side go. And she'll take a nine box. We'll go to the break. A three pin lead for Nancy Vestal and Dave Kumi over Deb Regan and Dave Hodge. Long way to go. We're coming right back to Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. <laughs> Dave Hodge ready to go. Fifth frame, second string. <laughs> on the head pin. That was the, uh, <laughs> what pin was that? I think was it used to be pin? the five. No, it was it the eight. I think it's in the five pin position. Tricky shot. Looks easy. A lot of wood. Got it. So the Dave Hodge fans are being very vocal in their support for this first time television bowler. Dave Rose. 648. Look at that. Give it a real nice shot. So basically the spread eagle with the five pin in the middle just to make it even more interesting. And that'll be a nine box. Interesting when you compare some of the roll-off scores. Uh, Dave Hodge rolled a 648 during the number one seed. Deb Regan on the women's side rolled a 642 yeah, I think the she, number one seed. I think she would have been... Um, Third, had she been lumped in with the men as well. And this is one of the cases where, as partners go, the woman has the higher average. Deb Regan at 120, Dave Hodge at 116. Dave Kumi with a spare. Well done. Well, the two men in this match would certainly not be described as finesse bowlers. They just get up there and they mm. fling it. They do. Off the head pin. You could hear him groan as soon as it left his hand. And an eight 
box. Vestal and Krumi lead in the match by four pins as we have passed the halfway point. Should uh, mention with some sadness the passing of a uh, bowling center operator. Of course, uh, friends and family are aware, but uh, perhaps a lot of bowling fans are not, that Angelo Vazella, owner of the Central Park Lanes, passed away on the 11th of December. Of course, we taped the show in December, so by the time you hear about this, it's already late in January. He's the owner of Central Park Lanes in East Boston, the bowling center celebrating its uh, 50th anniversary this month. He'd been involved uh, with the bowling center for quite a few years, so our condolences to his family and friends and the bowling community who will miss him. Ten box by Deb Regan. Angelo Vizella. He didn't quite let go of that one with the usual snap or finesse that Deb Regan generally has and doesn't have much pinfall to show for it. One, two, seven, nine, ten. I also want to acknowledge the presence here this afternoon of B. Dow from Methuen. B is a bowler. She, she carries a 78 average in the league that she currently bowls in. And what's special about B? B is 92 years oh. old. She's here, her. here with her grandson yeah. watching Candleton Stars and Strikes this afternoon. Now, how nice was that? A grandson to take his grandmother to our show today? How many grandkids are that nice to their grandparents these days? 78 average, Mike. She could beat you. I'm ready. Another 10 box. I'd take care of you first, though, big boy. The challenge match will come at some point down the road. A date and a time and a place and the stakes have yet to be negotiated. So please bear with us. I'm gonna milk this for every have your people can. Have your people get with my That's people. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah. I'd still like to have the Morgan boys involved somehow. Nancy's got a great shot. Nice shot, Nancy Vestal. That's the fourth mark of the second string for the team of Dave Krumi and Nancy Vestal. She's not gonna have a big fill in this fair, just four. Nice shot, not gonna make it though. Krumi and Vesta will have a lead of uh, just over a mark. That's an eight box. Six pin lead in the match, 16 just pins in the game. Just under a mark. The yeah, scoring pace has uh, slowed just a bit. We should see a hundred for both our couples. Hodge tries to get the back door strike. The two pin still stands. There's a piece of wood just to the right of it, which could pose a problem. If he caps the wood. No, nope, he made the spare. That's the second mark of the string for Dave Hodge and Deb Regan. little thin and look what he gets that happened to him last time he had a spare or had a spare to fill. very similar he had a three on what looked like a much better hit than that this time he gets four after hitting the head pin which he did last time what do you leave the spread eagle on the five pin I think he gave it a good shot he's at 100 right now 100 it is in the second string for the team of Dave Hodge and Deborah Egan. We should have a pretty tight match going to the third string. It's Dave Krumi stands to the line. Looks like the 10 pin is half in the, in the gutter to the right. Took a, a hop and a skip, but just didn't quite fall over. What do you think with five pieces of wood on the deck? Is that enough, Dick, to take these two? Nope. <laughs> That'll 
be a 10 box. That's one they could look back on that they could have had, should have had. Nice to have Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan of Salem, New Hampshire, back with us on Candlepin Stars and Strikes for the rest of the season. As Dave Krumey puts one in the pocket, leaves a makeable shot here. This is the five and the eight. A nice wide open berth at it. No pins in the way. And he's got it. So he'll close with a mark. So Dave Krumey and Nancy Vestal will take the lead into the third string by four pins plus whatever he gets on this ball. So it'll be four plus nine plus nine and a half. Four plus nine, a 13 pin lead for Dave Krumey and Nancy Vestal over Deb Regan and Dave Hodge headed to the third and final string of this championship match of our mixed doubles competition on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. We'll come back with the final string right after this. Ready to begin the third and final string. Close match, 13 pins separate the two teams. Dave Krumey will be first to bowl in the third string. The team of Nancy Vestal and Dave Krumey leading Deb Regan and Dave Hodge by 13 pins, 238 to 225 after two strings. Krumey with the spare. Sheer brute force, I think, is what took that one down, Dick. Not an easy spare to begin with. Well, we mentioned earlier, not a lot of finesse, just a lot of muscle, and Boom. that's what it took at that time. On the spare. Eight in the spare. Look at that 10 pin. Moving, moving, three pieces three of wood piece surrounded. Of wood. Okay, will this one go? Well, it is well, he's frozen. Got a, he's got a little margin for error here, too. I mean, he's got yeah. several different places. He's to got up. about 40 inches margin yeah. of error. The lane is, I think, 42 inches wide. He used it all. Two marks to open up the third string for Dave Krumey. As we try to give away some bonus money and get these teams to score. Now Dave Hodge on the head pin, but leaves a split. Dave's a graduate of Melrose High School. Freshman at Suffolk University, majoring in accounting. Oh! Look at that, it went by it twice. My. Melrose High School, the principal of Melrose High School is my good friend and broadcast partner, Bob Norton. And I thought I was your broadcast partner. Nine. Bob worked Harvard football games with me ah. this year. Bob is, has done college hockey and college football for years and years and years. He's a former assistant football coach and hockey coach at UNH. He's a former principal at Belmont High School in New Hampshire, at Hillsborough High School in New Hampshire, former assistant principal at Merrimack Valley High School in New Hampshire. He's been at Melrose now for, I think, eight or nine years. And that's amazing for a guy that's only 25, but he's done all those things. Bob is a terrific guy. Still does a lot of, uh, a lot of hockey games on, on Nesson. Just well known in, in the world of college sports around New England and the nation. A pair of nines for Dave Hodge. Now, will we give away some bonus money? We haven't given any away in a couple of weeks. Nancy Vestal working on a couple of marks. No, nope, missed the head pin. Just puts three in the spare. The lead is now up to 27 pins for Vestal and Krumi. No bonus money this time around. $1,000 for our winning team today, $600 in the added prize fund for the runners up. Thanks to Ray Simino for adding a little extra uh, money this week. That'll be a seven box for Nancy Vestal. And a half Worcester. Putting the ball where she did last time, but only getting two instead of three pins. Right through the opening. Wow. 
Nancy has five tour titles with the WCBC, which makes her the eighth winningest woman bowler in uh, professional cattle pin WCBC history. Another seven and boxes. Another seven. Two seven boxes for Nancy Vestal. Deb Regan on the head pin. This is a makeable shot. Not easy, but makeable. The two, the five, and the seven. Not going to make it. Once in a while, we do get results from the Senior Pro Tour, not very frequently. Back in October, in the women's division, Judy Witcher was the winner of the Senior Professional Women Bowlers. And on the men's side, a very familiar name, Charlie Jutras, was the winner with 680, winning $425. Where did that take place? Does that it say? Uh, was in Southampton, Canal Lanes. There's Deb Regan in the pocket. Nine pin drop. The five pin is still there. Don't know if Chet and Jones still own that bowling center. They did last, I heard. Few other names on the list. Paul Willits, number five. We saw him on the show last year. Dan Murphy, former host of this program, coming in at number 11. Is Jim old enough to be bowling with the seniors? And a spare. Yes, he is. As we go to the break, it's a tight match heading down the home stretch. Don't go away. Six boxes remain in our mixed doubles championship match on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Ask Candlepin bowling fans who they think would win in a game of bowling. Dick Lutz or Mike Morin? Oh, <laughs> Dick, of course. Hey, anybody can beat Mike. <laughs> if, if I could, anybody could, and I did. My money's on, on Mike. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fans have spoken. Find out what happens. But in the meantime, watch Candlepin Stars and Strikes Saturday and Sunday at noon, only on WNDS. We are ready to go as we have six boxes remaining in this match and less than two marks separating the two teams. And there is a quarter Worcester. Punching out only the three pin. That is one of the most amazing things to me in this game, that you can have that much force on your ball with that many objects standing and only have one of them go down when you hit almost in the middle. to everybody from time to time. Generally, the harder you throw the ball, something like that might happen. An eight box. If he opens here, the door will be open for Dave Hodge and Deb Regan. That is a very tough spare, leaving double wood. Three, five, eight, and nine in the back. And he picked another one. He was hoping to get a little action from the piece of wood that was on the deck to the immediate right of the three pin. That didn't work out for him. Five, eight, nine, still there. And another, another eight box. Out. Yeah, this is a big opportunity now. For Dave Hodge and partner Deb Regan, they are the top seeds in this four-week Candlepin Mixed Doubles Tournament. As we come down to the final half string. Will it go? The seven pin still stands. They put nine in the spare. Big moment here for young Dave Hodge. Yeah. And he missed it. 19 years of age. That'll be a 10 box, but he sure could have used a mark. Yeah, they really could have taken the lead with a couple of marks right here, especially since he had a great fill on the fourth frame spare. And then it would have been another eight fill. Yeah. So that, uh, that open really cost him eight, nine pins. The wood looks to be angled pretty well here. 
How far out is it? That's a question. He missed it oh, completely. Boy. So the wood question was moot. And it wouldn't have taken it anyway. It took only one, a nine box. And a nine pin difference between $1,000 and $600. Nine pins separate the two teams with four boxes to go. Haverhill Beef Company providing gifts to our winning bowlers as they do every week. Gift certificates to enjoy the many, many food varieties that you'll find at Haverhill Beef Company. And Haverhill, Joe and his family have been at it for a while and they're enjoying being associated with Candlepin Stars and Strikes. And I know that our bowlers are enjoying that association. The deli platters, marinated, uh, marinated meats, kebabs, entire turkeys. And with the Super Bowl just about at hand, how many of you will be having Super Bowl parties? Well, Haverhill Beef is the place to go if you're in the North Shore or anywhere. Call Joe today. Tell him what you need. He'll have it taken care of for you. Well, Deb Regan salvages an eight box out of what looked like a possible disaster. You mean Nancy? Uh, Nancy, I'm sorry. Nancy Vesta. Look well, at this. Oh, there's the strike. Watch it one more time. And no, this is not slow motion. This is real time. <laughs> uh, there it goes. Seven of the ten last to go. Padding right. their lead. Here's Deb Regan now. Needing to mark. That strike could just about seal the fate. Nice try for Deb Regan. Trying to uh, pick that up from the outside, the left-hand side of the one pin, instead of going inside, trying to squeeze between the one and the six, which is the other way to go about it, kind of like that. And that will be a nine box for Deb Regan. Needs a mark in this box to match the strike put on the board by Nancy Vestal. To send it to the final two frames. Right on the head pin. Yeah, Nothing she wrong threw with a great that ball. one. And the pin is uh, coming out just a little bit in front of the seven and the eight. And if it comes out far enough, it could hit the lane where it meets the plate and straighten out, but it doesn't look as though it's going to come back that far. Getting a little coaching from one of the bowlers in the. Uh, Gallery. Right on the red stripe, I would think she'd try to go for it. Oh. Didn't make it. So she will be open in the eighth frame. So it is nine pins plus a ball for the team of Nancy Vestal and Dave Kumi with two boxes to go. So a couple of marks. That will just about do it. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we have an $875 shot coming up. And the shot that be... is worth $875 from Dave Krumi. Wonder if he had time to really think about it, if he even knew it. I guess he must have. He got up there and just didn't waste any time at all. <laughs> he gave us $875 with the body English stick. I think he knew. But that's pretty much put it away. And that's a $50 shot right there. Look at this. Well, it ain't $875, but it is $50, plus it looks as though a first prize of $1,000 that he'll split with his doubles partner, Nancy Best. Yeah, put six in the spare and a 134. And the championship, it is mathematically impossible for them to catch him. 372 triple. That's a bit of an improvement from their two what last week? Their 289. 289. An improvement of uh, about 83 pins. That is remarkable, isn't is correct. it? Yeah. Exciting finish for those on hand today. You at home. So a 
outs. The two and the four left for Dave Hodge. His first appearance on television, not a success in the sense of winning, but he's a nice young man. We hope that we'll see him back sometime. Dave Hodge will try to close with a mark. Uh, he'll get a nine pin drop. But as we stated at the top of the program, the bowlers have all lived up to their promise. All the strings today. Everyone Dick, was over 100. Over 100. Yeah. And he missed the spare. A nine box and a 102 third string for the team of Dave Hodge and Deb Regan. A 327 triple, 372 to 327. And we'll be back to meet our winning bowlers when we come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire for Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV right after this. Candlepin Bowling is being brought to you by Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan and Rockingham Honda. Last week it was a 289 winning score in our mixed doubles competition. We wouldn't have made it this week. A 372 to 327 win for Dave Krumi and Nancy Vestal over Dave Hodge and, De and Deb Regan. Yeah, it was a very exciting match on both levels. It was very close right to the end. And then we almost gave away the $875 to uh, the, the Krumi team uh, for the uh, two strikes. But uh, as it turns out, a little extra bonus money and some nice paychecks today for some good bowling. Let's hand out some money right now as we turn to our runners up here this afternoon, Deb Regan and Dave Hodge. We have $300 apiece for you both. Congratulations and a quick word from you both about uh, the match and, uh, and the way it went. Well, how are you feeling out there today? I felt pretty good. Just nothing seemed to happen for us. We threw a nice ball. We're happy with the way we bowled. We'll be back again. Congratulations okay. to you and Dave. First time on TV. How did it feel for you? Uh, I felt good. I was a little nervous at the beginning, you know, then I couldn't capitalize on the easy stuff and yeah, split over here. This lane loves me a lot, I can tell. Um, but that's besides the point. That was fun all in all, though. You had a pretty good rooting section here. Oh, yeah. This is my boys and uh, my, my mom and everyone out there all cheering for me. We hope to see you again. Thanks very much. Dave Hodge and Deb Regan, congratulations to you. And we will have one of the winning team be Dave, who's going to bowl? Nancy Vestal's going to bowl the bonus ball contest. We'll have uh, Nancy step up and roll a ball. We'll try to match her up with a winner from home on our bonus ball contest here from Lita Lanes. Did have a winner last week. We did have a winner, so we're at $10 in the uh, jackpot this week. And let's see what Nancy does. Right in the pocket. And an eight. Eight pins. I think I can Mike find Warren an eight. will reach into the bin. And let's see how well Mike does this time around. He pulls right. out a pink, pink card. Look at this. And it's from Claude <laughs> Wooden of Shrewsbury, Massachusetts. The pink card with the number seven on it. So a consolation prize from NNR Trophies of Winchenden, Massachusetts for Claude Wooden. And the second card out of the bin is Walter Ramis of Andover, Massachusetts. Ten free strings of bowling here at Lita Lanes. And let's pass out some money as well. We have a $500 check for Dave Krumi, a $500 check for Nancy Vestal. We have $50 in bonus money. Did you know when you stepped to the line after that strike that... You were eight, bowling for 875 bucks. that the third strike was on the line? Well, I knew I was looking for the third strike because I need Christmas money, so I was <laughs> looking for it. <laughs> you came that close in an exciting match as well for you, Nancy. And uh, how, do you, how do you explain it? Last week, uh, uh, couldn't break 100, and this week, you guys were on fire, 370-plus. Just made a couple of adjustments. That's all it is. Just a matter of inches. The game is a, just a game of inches. Thanks very much to you. Congratulations to you both. We'll hope to see you again soon Thank on you. Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Dave Krumi and Nancy Vestal are winners here this afternoon. And now... Back to the ladder series. Exactly. We have uh, three champions seated for the Tournament of Champions with three more to go. Just to refresh your memory, Mike Poulin still on top at 412, Joe Tavernese at 374, and Scott Creighton, our most recent winner in the singles division, coming up at 349. We'll be back to series number four next week. And we also have gift certificates to Haverhill Beef for our winning team here this afternoon. I forgot to mention that. Don't want to forget that as well. That'll do it for our mixed double series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes for Mike Morin and our entire WNDS-TV crew. I'm Dick Lutz. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. So long, everyone.